All right, well, welcome everyone to this community snapshot, Finding Meaning, the Jury Show at the Linden House Arts Center by Nancy Lukashevitz and Carol Henry. Nancy is the curator of exhibitions at the Linden House Arts Center and has curated the Jury Show for 37 years and probably thousands of other shows over the time because she really keeps the galleries active. And Carol is professor of art education at the Lamar Dodd School of Art at the University of Georgia. And she's such a fabulous teacher that they even awarded her nationally for her skill. And she hates to be bragged on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Today we have a live audience here at the Linden House Art Center. So welcome everyone. Well, I guess I'm going to be talking first about the history of the Juried Exhibition, and um, we have a few slides to show you. One is this one, which shows the Linden House, how it looked at the time the first Juried Exhibition was held. Quite different than it does today. It was um, 118 years old then, and um, was a playground facility. It was built in 1856 by Dr. Edward Ware. by Dr. Edward Ware, and um, who was a local farm, prominent farm, uh, physician and first mayor of Athens, in fact. He sold it to his uh, fellow physician and pharmacist, Dr. Edward Linden, in 1880, and the Linden heirs sold it to the government in 1939. <laughs> this is um, showing... Um, how the inside came to be after about 35 years of being a playground facility and recreation center. The inside was quite sparse and um, was, uh, during the rec years it was, I've heard stories of a gospel sing, um, USO, USO socials, um, teenage dances and such. But I remember actually seeing a ping pong table in that double parlor. That's very different than today. The first juried exhibition was called The Joy of Art. It was um, held in 1974, and my husband, Ronnie Lukashevitz, organized it. He, there were a lot, many, many, many artists in town and no juried exhibition at the time, so he thought it would be a good idea, and it proved to be a very good idea to hold this exhibition. Droves of artists came and entered work. Um, very good artwork was hung and hundreds of visitors came to see it. And from that, a municipal arts program was born at the Linden House, which um, grew to have art classes for youth and adults, summer art camps, outreach art programs, festivals, and it was a home for local art groups and involved many community partnerships and special events. I just mention that now because it is, you know, well, I'm not going to dwell on it a lot because that's a whole other story, but it is a meaning of, uh, you know, part of the meaning of the juried exhibition. And there's that house of art on the hill at Linden House. <laughs> As it was. As it was, yeah, at that, in the 70s, early 80s, no, in the 70s. One of the first um, exhibitions, you can always find a lot of diversity to be seen in the juried exhibitions. Later on, um, trying to improve the the, um, the the building to actually you know keep upkeep the building and um, show the gallery in a more formal way. Built, walls were built to in, you know in the inside the house, and more juried exhibitions were held. More juried exhibitions in the house. It got to be um, 75 works was an average of what was possible before the expansion was built. And now we are able to do about 164 on average. This year is 175 pieces in the exhibition. Michael David Hall was the um, juror for um, the 19th exhibition in 1992. He is a a critic, collector, and sculptor from Michigan, and I thought his words were quite interesting. We have quotes from the artists, the jurors, in the catalogs. Later, it got so small 
that um, groups of people came together, a grassroots support for the um, uh, Spilos project, which was completed in 1999, to restore the house and to build an expansion that is six times the size of the house, um, including all these different spaces um, now. The galleries always have interesting, thought-provoking things for the jury exhibition. People come, they enjoy coming, they look forward to it, just to see what strange stuff is there this year. <laughs> Susan Lebowski was um, juror for the 23rd exhibition in 1996. And um, she's, she says, I look for a certain degree of professionalism and seriousness about the work, and then I look for a spark of something very personal and very much about the individual vision rather than trends. I thought that was kind of a very um, profound. No categories for works in the juried exhibition. All types of media um, are acceptable. No categories for awards. And um, always very full. Okay. Oh, and then Carol, please. Thank okay. You. <laughs> All right. So the opening of the 37th annual exhibition, as you see, was a cause for celebration for everyone that was here, and many of you were. There's proof that it was <laughs> a cause for celebration. That was the flash uh, mob on the stairs. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about some different ways that people can approach works of art in the Linden House exhibition because it's, it's a big space and the works are all around and they're separate galleries. So sometimes it's hard for someone who would come in and think they needed to look at everything. And, and all of you are so used to coming to the Linden House, you know what I'm going to be saying. But this is for the archives, so I <laughs> hope it resonates with you and you agree with it. So one, one way was um, looking through the exhibition catalog was a way for some viewers to orient themselves. Sitting on the bench and looking at the different works that are on display and who's in it. And the, the main thing, though, is that there are a lot of different ways to approach the exhibition. And one way is to just begin by looking for works that, re that you enjoy, works that relate to your own experiences, something that catches your eye. So here are people doing that. Nancy in the picture as well. You can see the range of work. Um, talking about the works of art with someone else can help you see things you may not have noticed. You know that from your own experience. That's the city manager? Yeah. Seeing things he may not have noticed. So the conversation. pointed out a few things to me. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, making a photograph can also help you focus more deeply and see even more than you initially noticed. And I love this photograph because she just almost merges with that drum. Mm -hmm. Sometimes works, works of art speak to us clearly. And sometimes it helps us understand more if we can hear what the artist has to say. So this is Susan Pelham talking about her work with a group of students. And Dan Smith, who teaches art at Gaines Elementary, talking about his painting. This was actually a spring break camp where the kids came here and um, were able to meet the artists during a spring break session. Okay. Sometimes works are displayed in ways that help focus our attention and see both works more deeply. Um, they may even appear to be in conversation with each other. And I was telling Nancy, the Phillips Collection in D.C. is set up exactly that way, that works are in conversation with one another so that the viewer can see relationships between them in some way, shape, or form. So this little baby shot, looking up at Dan's painting. <laughs> and it's actually like that in the gallery. It's on one wall and the painting is on the other wall. But there's a type of conversation going on there. Even the food on the baby's mouth kind of picks up the color in Dan's paint. 
you want to take a formalist perspective. <laughs> and this is a more formal kind of conversation between two works that are close to one another on the walls, the, the structure, the composition, even though they're both very different. How are these two works alike? And you start thinking about that a little bit more. It helps you notice more in the work. Um, and you can look for these kinds of conversations, or you can look for works that you're drawn to when you look around the gallery. And Nancy and I were talking about how someone could come into the gallery and stand in the middle and just sort of do a 360, kind of slow, and then decide where they wanted to go would be another way to begin the exhibition and view in it. These are some of the works from this year to show you the kind of diversity. So all kinds of media techniques that might draw your attention. You can also seek out those works which won jurors awards and try to find those. But the caveat here is to realize that's only the opinion of one juror. And there are many other works that are worth looking at and seeing. <laughs> so, And I think Nancy was working on a sheet that had um, the locations of the award winners right, right. so that people could pick that up and do that if they wanted to after we talked about this. But that would be a, another way to help orient a new visitor to looking at the work here. Uh, you can also look for work by artists you know and enjoy. So pe friends of yours, people that you know as you're walking through and their name catches your attention. You can look for works in specific media or using certain techniques, which help you in your own work or how you think about art. And the main thing is to find work that you truly enjoy and that you would like to see again and again. That it's, in, it's not exhaustible, and I am particularly drawn to this one. Um, of this photograph and the way the light emanates in her hair and the little nest that she's holding. And it's um, something that I'd want to take with me in my head after being in the show. Uh, come back to see the exhibit more than once. Hopefully you'll find new things and discover new meanings each time you visit. We know that's true. And then to see a fun video that this young man behind the camera made, Capturing the excitement of submissions day, complete with interviews with some of the artists, you can check it out on boomersinathens.com. It's also on YouTube, but we can't pull it up here because YouTube is blocked. But it's really great. I watched it last night. It is. It's wonderful. Actually, it's, it's, it's boomersinathens.org. Oh, 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 well, I was... That's all right. <laughs> No. I did. It was my fault. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you. Movies in Athens .org. Okay, so then questions and comments for us about the history of it for Nancy or about anything about the show. Yes. I guess I would wonder um, how the tradition started using just one juror rather than maybe a couple or three people so that you got, you know, a wider perspective of what they thought was interesting for people to do. Yeah, um, it it is something that I've tried to have more than one juror. That actually is part of my job is to select the juror. And um, I have tried it before three times, and each time they told me don't do it again. <laughs> they had, it was just, they, they just couldn't come to consensus. So to try and not have such a narrow vision, I look for people that are used to looking at a lot of different kind of art and have a background in seeing what's going on in the world today, because um, all of this is being made today. We're not going into history, but um, some, some of them re reference history as well. But trying to get somebody that's overall knowledgeable and is used to making judgments, that's often a curator, um, a critic, um, a collector, different types of, of professions like that. Thank you. Um, I know that each juror brings his or her own set of likes and dislikes to the table. Do you know that ahead of time, and does that enter into your decision about which juror to choose? I'm assuming they don't have too much bias. I look for trying to 
not have too much bias. Just uh, um, and I think you can see in most of the exhibitions the variety. They know their job is is to show a broad range of things and to show quality in all types of styles and in all types of media. Um, so hopefully there's not too much of a bent in each show, um, but there will be some because it is a, a person. Why do you select so many? Sometimes I think it feels a little bit crowded. It is something that, um, yeah, it is something that changes from year to year. I was when I was doing those averages for that, I was looking at that, and some are much fewer and some are more. It depends on the size of things. Um, I also work with the person who's used to looking at a space and and sort of thinking about how much work would fit in the space. So between all of that comes, we come up with a, an amount of work, and besides, if, if they just say, I cannot, I, I won't take anything less than this, then I've got to go with that. <laughs> but, um, but it is, it's, it's something that I think we need a bigger building again. <laughs> Since you mentioned that the juror's award is so specific, it's just one person deciding, how do the artists feel about juror's awards and, and what, what they mean? Well, there are probably as many different opinions as there are artists. <laughs> I was going to say that the ones who receive them probably like them very much. <laughs> Carol actually is, was accepted. Her, her work was accepted this year, in the ex and often. I mean, you get in quite a bit. Well, I've been rejected, too. But I did, yeah. many years ago, I did get a, an award from one of the jurors, and it was really a nice feeling to have that happen. But... And many of the jurors, when they talk in the comments, they, they caution artists um, to not take things too personally, that it is, um, you know, it's one person's opinion. And I've noticed often um, watching things that are not accepted and things that are accepted, that very often very strong things either are accepted or not accepted. But, you know, they're strong. So it, the judge has an opinion about them one way or another usually. And, it's, and also, I think it's important to think about a juror as like a person that puts together a CD. You know, they're, they're putting songs that they like how they sound, but they're putting them together in a way that they become interesting to a listener. And there are many other songs that would sound equally interesting if they were inserted, but the person creating the CD is thinking of this one arrangement of things that work for them. And so I think that that's one of the most important things to communicate to people about a juried exhibition is that it's one person's vision of the show. And it, and can one, only... and it doesn't mean that everything that they pick is great according to them and everything that they didn't pick is not. It just means that this work works, whereas this one might not work with something else. You know, just how they're thinking. Because it's and a creative act, putting together a show as a creative act. That's right, yeah. And another thing some people don't realize is they say there are a lot of photographs. Well, there are probably a very lot of photographs submitted. So you, you, they have to look at kind of what the body of things that are submitted as well as what they choose. And there might not be any watercolor, you know, or something. And they say, why isn't there any watercolor in the show? And it, sometimes it's just a factor of what's submitted as well. The uh, jurors' comments in the catalogs, I think, are always very, very good. It would be really educational to have it extended a bit further to why certain pieces were given a prize. Um, and it, I don't think they would object, surely. Well, they might. I mean, you, I, I've been thinking about this is a comment that's been made a lot this year. Every every year there are different points that, that come up common, like a... a mind thread that's going through. But but you don't ask the Academy Award judges why they picked that movie. I'm a juror in a show. Mm -hmm. I'm headed to Philadelphia tomorrow. Right. And I have to pick the prizes. Mm -hmm. And I won't have, if people ask me, I won't have any hesitation. I no. won't say why I did not give a prize. You know, your piece really 
was very boring. Uh, <laughs> but to so say why you gave a prize, it just helps everybody to, to begin to look at that piece and see whatever it was the juror saw in it. Yeah, it's an it's another way to organize something. Will you be in person there during the? Um, they will have an opportunity. Well, that's wonderful. I mean, that's even better than. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but there are all different ways that things are arranged, are organized. Like our show is you enter with actual works, not with photographs of the works, and um, so they're different. Each show is organized differently, and it's just the choice of the organizer. So I guess a question I have is how long does the juring process take? It can take, it, it's, we usually allow two days and, and they usually just focus and, and don't want to stop. You know, they have all of the works in their head. It's amazing to me how much they really have all the works in their head because they can remember where they put something and they don't talk. You know, that would just totally break their concentration, don't you think? If, um, yeah, so it's it's hard to say exactly, but um, but they get, sometimes they go out and get a, go for a walk sometimes, but, but usually it's pretty intense. While you've got it on your head is when you make those decisions, and, and we usually allow about two days. It would be nice to get them here longer, but <laughs> they're very busy people. I was wondering, just um, maybe some more tips. I really like the, like how to, to look at the artwork when you first come. I wonder if you could say any more about um, how to encourage people to, I guess what I want to say is be open-minded uh -huh. and really, you know, not just, oh, I don't like that. But you maybe take an overall view maybe. Uh, but I don't know, I guess to, to encourage, how to encourage people to be open particularly contemporary art. I think when you're working with a group of people, you can do that because you can speak to them and, and say that and, and talk to them a little bit more. I think in the situation that most people come into the Linen House, if they just walk in, you know, how does that happen? And that was one thing I was talking about with Nancy. When you walk in the door of the Linen House, it's a big space. And if you were just, I've been here for many, many times, so we're all really used to it. You all have too. But when you walk into that space, where do you go? What do you look at first? What orients you? Where, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to look around the whole metal gallery? Are you supposed to go up the stairs? Do you go in the side rooms? You know, where do you go? How, how is it presented that way? How, where's the orientation to the show? And there are um, there's some studies that have been done that this one I really love, and it was an article written in the 80s by Eisner and Dobbs, and it was called Silent Pedagogy. And they studied 34 museums about what they did to help visitors access the works of art um, without any kind of intervention from anybody else. And so they looked at things like an orientation space. Um, they also looked at what, were, what kind of label material there was or uh, signage. And they also um, looked at how the works were arranged, like physically, like what kind of clues that gave you. So I tried to talk about some of those things, just really surface level in what I presented. But the Linden House is not really set up to be like a museum in that way. But I still think there could be something that oriented a visitor to the show other than, you know, there could be a page in the catalog that talked about some techniques that you could use. Good idea. You know, and you could put that in. Mm -hmm. um, there could be a little, like Nancy's working on, I asked her how would somebody notify the award winners if they wanted to. <laughs> and so she's working on a sheet to do that right. so that somebody could come in and say, well, I want to go to these things. So, because it's really hard to see 174 things and think you're supposed to look at all of them and only come one time. People don't do that, you know. <laughs> and, so, and then your idea about contemporary art, that's also interesting because in contemporary art, often the work is more difficult for people to access 
because they don't have the, they don't know what you do to access contemporary work, or they think they don't know enough about it to access it. And so um, having a little, I've seen some great little guide sheets about looking at contemporary art, you know, and how contemporary art focuses on um, juxtaposition or, or putting, bringing things from appropriation, how you would appropriate something from one time period and put in another period, those kinds of ideas that are common in contemporary <coughs> art. But what they are and how you can look for them just like you look for line and color, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's a nice little article written by um, Olivia Gude, and it's G-U-D-E, and you can probably find it online, and it's um, Postmodern Principles for forget the title exactly, but it, it, she really goes through about eight or nine characteristics of contemporary art that she uses to help high school students access it, which could be a good way to start. Thank you for that question. <laughs> I'm a visitor, and I was just wondering, is this your annual show? Yes. Yes, we have this. This is the 37th time that we've done it. We do it. This is the show we do every year. Other than that, we have changing exhibitions um, throughout the year, and and not some of the um, exhibitions are just in one gallery, so we might have more than one going on at the same time. And, and for this show, is it a local or a yes. state or national, or what is it? Yes, it's, it's locally oriented. Thanks for that question, because that's another thing that people people suggest. Maybe if we went statewide or national, that it would be a better show. But mm -hmm. I don't think so. So it's not while well I'm here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I guess the um, does the juror actually oversee the hanging of the work? No. Okay. No, they are here and select the works, and and before they leave, they're usually spread out so they can see all of their all the works together and make their final selections for prizes mm -hmm. and awards. Um, we usually have cash awards and merit awards, and then some other categories that the judge selects as well. But then um, where it goes in the gallery, that's very time consuming, and that's that's my, another one of my jobs, and with help from everybody here on staff. Do they ever um, have any, do they ever express any desire to have works beside one another or in certain places? Do they ever just say that while they're? I don't think I have had one. I mean, I wouldn't, they might. I mean, I wouldn't put, it, I wouldn't be surprised if they did, but I haven't had that happen. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I want to ask something. Can sure. I ask something? Yeah. Um, when we were preparing this and trying to come up with the suggestions, too, there was a, um, a former student of mine that came through with her mother, and when they were leaving, they said they enjoyed it. And so we said, well, how did you approach looking? Right. You know, and they told us that essentially they look for the artists that they knew and were trying to find as they walked through. Cause they, so that's where that one came from. So I guess I would like to ask you if there was a particular way that you found very interesting to you as you looked through the Linden House or how you approached it as you did that yourself. I always look for the three I want to take home with me. I uh -huh. hope that Nancy isn't looking so I can sneak out with them. <laughs> <laughs> and hope they're for sale. So you, you, you tell yourself you want to find the three you take home. That's a really nice way to do it. I like that. Well, I always look for people I know because quite a few of the people that I know have worked in the show. And then while I'm looking for those, you know, I can't help but stop by another one that's just calling me. As you mentioned, the space is really big, so I almost always head straight over into the Ronnie Lukashevitz Gallery because it's a nice, small, regular, rectangular-shaped space. <laughs> and I can get, yeah, and because I knew Ronnie, too. And I go in there, and I get oriented to, to that space oh, nice. and start there, and then I'm ready to go out into, into the bigger oh, area nice. and uh -huh. explore. See, that would be a nice little orientation suggestion. 
And I, <clears throat> Michael and I like to go into any gallery and see if we can figure out which is the best painting. <laughs> I exercise our, our skills in, in composition, you go you know, in with the value, and contrast. And sometimes we agree, and sometimes I have to talk him into my choice. But you can start with one wall, pick out the best thing on the wall, then right. do the whole room, and then go upstairs. And if you can remember, you can figure out what you think is the best painting in the whole show. And I'm not, notice I'm not saying photographs, but I don't get photographs. <laughs> I can't judge them, and I kind of leave them out of my look. At, I, I kind of don't look at them unless they really, really have to call on me to go up to a photograph and go and be wowed. A particular media. Mm -hmm. Any other suggestions from the crowd? Thank you all for coming. It's yeah, a nice thank big you. Group, yeah, and thank you for your questions.